Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. Happy Tulip Tribe collaboration. I'm so glad you're here. It's going to be a grand live hour. We're going to have so much fun. We're talking about elements and principles. The concepts that are used in every single design that you ever create. Every single one. It's the same design concepts that we teach in the classroom and basic floral design, advanced floral design, and the fundamentals and the boot camp. Every class that we teach is based upon the elements and principles. So by going live with them, you get a little bit of a preview of what we do in the classroom, how we teach our concepts, and you can see how the concepts apply to absolutely any design style. We've got a full house today. It's going to be so much fun. In the studio here with me today, we've got Michelle, Carolyn, and Marisa. Online, we've got David, Caledonia, and Susie. And we have you. Take a moment, make sure that you put your tulip and let everybody know where you're from. Get to know each other, chat amongst yourselves, you may find out that you have a Tulip Tribe friend right around the corner that you're connecting with digitally that maybe someday you'll want to be in the real world, not just the virtual world. So again, it's elements and principles, everything we teach at Flower School in basic and advanced, online, wedding boot camp, fundamentals, all of it. We'll be doing different mechanics. You can see I have a long, low piece with a bit of foam set off center leaving this whole section just empty. One of the things that I find is that oftentimes when you see a big container, you think, well, I need foam everywhere, when in reality, you don't. Sometimes you only need it in one part. So I did this off-center, then I'll be doing one without foam, foam-free, and it's got floral netting. You've all seen that before, just the chicken wire, it's nested down in, anchored in place with waterproof tape, and then a low dish that we did put foam all the way across and it's secured in place with anchor pins so rather than having to deal with tape and hiding it just add it in anchor pins so i'll be able to do different types of arrangements flower wise you can see we've got an assortment that's just beautiful going to the pastels with peach pink ivory Callas, mini cymbidiums, peonies, carnations, roses, lisianthus, hydrangea, kale, fatsia, fern, and eucalyptus and magnolia. Oh my gosh, we have so many great things. Then on this side, going into the more intense hues with hydrangea, carnations, spray roses, kale, garden roses, ringium, magnolia, kangaroo paw, and also a bit of curly willow wanted to bring out the tulip and share with you. Now this is a dyed product, so it's not the natural color, but the brown flowers are so popular now. All the browns and coppers, those muted, intense hues. And so the tulip, isn't that beautiful? These are actually left over from the wedding trends class that we had last week. And you can see the coloration on them is just fabulous. They are dyed, they are not natural, but aren't they exquisite? So my first question for you, so here's something, get your fingers ready to type, put your answer in there. Dyed flowers, yay or nay? Color enhanced, yay or nay? Artificial, yay or nay? So basically, is it natural color or do you like the new color options? So yay if you love it, nay if you don't. So that's a quick, easy little type in there so that you can go. Housekeeping. Remember, if you're on your phone, turn it sideways. The picture will be bigger. If the comments cover up part of the picture and you don't like it, swipe it. It puts it in silent mode. That way you don't have the comments to mess up the photo. Then if you want them, swipe it the opposite direction. The comments will come back. If you're on your computer, you can hit full screen, go larger than life. If you're with us on YouTube, you might be connected to your television, that 72-inch screen. And it is truly larger than life. So yes, you can watch us on any 
any digital device you have. So on that note, I'm going to start gathering things. Michelle, Marisa, Carolyn, what's going on out there? Well, we have a couple of students with us on YouTube today. Marmax with us, of course, and Catherine, who made it safely back to Brooklyn. Uh, Yan, who just submitted her final for advanced floral design. And Arthur's with us. Cool. So, Yan, I saw that your submission was in there. You must be in the queue getting things organized. You pay, pay attention. It'll get done. And um, Marmat, Catherine, glad you're here. Glad you're all safe and sound. Hope you're having a grand evening. Materials-wise, I grabbed some aspidistra leaves, the large aspidistra, a bit of salal, indigenous to our area. Some people call it lemon leaf. It's not from a lemon, but it has that sort of shape. So Salal, S-A-L-A-L. And then some Italian Ruscus, which I can't believe how many questions I got on the Tuesday, Tulip Tuesday tip about storing your foliages. And the foliage that everybody kept saying, well, what is that? It was Italian Ruscus that I used in the Tulip Tuesday video on how to store foliage to increase your profitability. So a variety of different things here. I may use some fatsy as well, but I thought I'd start with this. And one thing I'm going to do with the foliage, just give it a cut and then I'll be working on all of these kind of back and forth. But one thing I find is that oftentimes takes too much effort to green things. So if you work with large leaves, you can even pull back some of the main vein. Oops, I tore that one. I didn't mean to do that. Maybe I won't use him because I didn't mean to tear it. Let's start over here. Give it a cut and then slice down a bit of the main vein. I don't know how many of you are from up north, you know, towards the Seattle area. The Seattle Northwest Flower and Garden Show is starting right now. And we have several of the tulip tribe that are there that are exhibiting beautiful, beautiful work. Um, and if you go, you'll see the larger than life mannequins adorned with floral dresses. And two of the winners were from the tulip tribe. FDI certified floral designers. Tomasi was a winner. Corey was there. She's a winner. Um, I think Eric and Frank were also there. So it was pretty exciting to see so many of our tribe doing well at the garden show with their exhibits. The pictures of the dresses are gorgeous. So if you get a chance to go to the Northwest Farm Garden Show, stop in, check it out, say hi, you know, look at all the beautiful things. So I'm just kind of wrapping and poking and then I go back and I use a part of the stem and use it like it's a straight pin right through the leaf to hold it into place so you can see my mechanics start getting filled in with just two leaves so it's a little faster not so much work at it you can always go back and take another leaf some other kind and help portion it down like so but I find that just a leaf or two and your mechanics are concealed and you're ready to start designing. So part of the elements and principles ties in with mechanics, even though that's not the concept. But if you get your mechanics and then your theories, then you have beautiful designs. So the theories are the elements and principles, the mechanics are how do you cover everything. Marisa, what you got there? Uh, we have... Uh I believe their name is Gil on Facebook, um, wants to be a certified floral designer and is asking if we have any classes in Los Angeles. You know, Gil, we don't have anything in Los Angeles. Our classroom is in Portland, Oregon, but we do have everything we teach online so that you can do it from anywhere. And the beauty of working online is you have access to the program 24-7 on any device at any time, as long as you have access to the internet, you have access to Flower School. And then it's still fully teacher supported. Michelle, Marisa, and Carolyn, all three are with you as you do your studies to help guide you and make sure that you get it all understood. And I find our online students do really quite well as they go through and then enter into the workplace. So I'm doing another little pin here. So you can see how that just tucks in. Some people do, hairpins with wire, but I always figure, you know, if you already have this, 
why not just use the stem save yourself some money not having to buy other things so there's a tip on preparing to do your designs is get things ready with just a bit of foliage before you even begin now a lot of times people say with the elements and principles that the foam free designs don't work as well and i have to disagree with that because just because it's foam free doesn't mean it has to be a hot mess it can still have all your elements and principles. It can still be correctly designed. It just has a little different approach to things. So for my foliage, I might take some Italian Ruscus, place that in, and then just start winding and bring it in. And then I can even feed it in and around. So Carolyn, Marisa, Michelle, what else is on going on out there? Well, I see so many tulips out there. Shout out to Wayne, Diane, Harmony, Jennifer, Lori, Brooke, Ewa, Teacher Show, uh, Yuardi, Annalise, Karen, and Julie. And by the way, Vega's with us and says hi. Oh, wonderful. I know you've been so crazy busy. You've had to watch the videos and replay and couldn't come in. I think, Wayne, you're coming to school here in a couple of weeks with us in the advanced class. I think it starts uh, March something or other. I don't remember. But Wayne will be here. And then Berga is back. So yay. Good deal. Carolyn, you got anything over there? Yeah, Catherine, one of our online students, gave us a glowing review. She says she's a current online student and the program is wonderful and highly recommends it. Thank you. You know, we work so hard to make sure that we have everything you need as a student to be successful. And then when we hear that it has worked for you, that just makes us so happy. Because our goal is to make you able to study and do what you love in your own style without having to suffer through the learning process in a way that you don't like. So we try to make it as fun and easy as possible. You can see how I've got things started in. Now, once you cover your mechanics and you begin, then you need to start thinking about the elements, the form, the space, the texture, the line, the color. And I find I almost always start a bit with the form, thinking, okay, am I going to go rounded? Am I going to go oblong? Am I going to go vertical? Start thinking about the form. Then I go to line, because that establishes the form. And then after that, I jump over to principles and add the emphasis in. Because I find if I have a form, a line, and an emphasis, everything else starts to fall into place. So for this one, I'm going to do more in the Bespo style, the more casual look. And I'm going to start my lines using Magnolia because it's so beautiful. The timing of the year is just the best for Magnolia. It's so grand. While I look and analyze, have you guys got anything going on out there? Yeah, so on YouTube, Arthur says he uses actual hairpins that he gets at Walgreens for his hairpins in foam. Not bobby pins, but old school hairpins. You know, that would be totally perfect because you, know, you can buy greening pins, which are nothing more than a glorified hairpin, or you could make your own using an 18 gauge wire, or you can buy hairpins. So that's a great idea. You know, it's always fun to look around and see what is available that's not really floral, but that meets our floral needs because many times it's less expensive and it's exactly what you need to get what you want. Now I've got my branch, I broke it, then I whittled a bit and then I have to weave it into the netting until I get it solidly placed. And it's not going to be perfectly solid yet. Once I get the rest of the stems in, it will lock it into place, but I can reach in and I can pull that netting up around it, trying to tighten it and that helps lock it into place. Then I can angle it so I get a nice movement coming through. Then bring the second piece and thinking about my line, wanting to pull it from one side of the arrangement clear over to the other. Okay. Leanne, uh, for the other arrangement, the one in the low black ceramic, if you have a moment, Stacy would like to know how you are using the anchor pins for the Oasis. Ah, well that's my secret. You gotta come to flower school to hear that one. I'm not gonna tell you. 
Okay, maybe I'll tell you. I should probably tell you. So I will go back to that one in just a second, but let's stop on this one. And you can see I've created a line that comes through the arrangement on a diagonal. So that it's guiding your eye through. So now my form at this point is kind of an oval. If I go higher, it might be triangular, but I don't think I'm going to. So it's going to be more of an oval or even a crescent. If I leave this part down, then it might end up being more crescent-like. Then to create my focal emphasis, I could bring in some kale. And Leanne, um, going back to your um, question about color enhanced or dyed flowers, I have quite the response here. Excellent. What are the responses? <laughs> well, so first, um, Lori Schultes uh, says that she couldn't keep enough of the tie dyed tie dyed roses in stock for Valentine's Day. And then we have, let's see, about 10 yeses that are for um, color enhanced and are dyed. Only a few no, like four. And then, let's see, Carol says at first, what, like a few years ago, was like no. But um, now she is, now she sees how it enhances, so yes. And then Holly, Debbie, and Annalise says it all depends on the design. I love the fact that you guys are open-minded because there's uh, oftentimes that we just say, no, it has to be natural. And we forget that, well, you know what? We put on lipstick. It's not natural. It's okay. Maybe you don't put on lipstick, but I put on lipstick and I think that it's okay. So it is so true. It depends on the application, depends on the product, depends on how well it's done. All of those things make a difference in the design, um, so it's kind of good to hear that, that perspective. That makes me very happy. So, line and emphasis. Okay. So here's another question for you. Let's see who gets the answer first. Of all the elements and principles, which one refers to the geometry of the arrangement? So if you've been to flower school already, if you've had basic floral design, you're going to know that answer. Which element or principle refers to the geometry of the arrangement? And so Carolyn, Marisa, and Michelle, you guys watch and see who gets it first. Well, on, um, in addition to that, so Myra on Facebook wants to know um, how to use the elements and principles when designing a wreath. This is the exact same thing. You're still going to have the same elements and principles. And in fact, on this design, it would be similar. I'm going to do it more on a horizontal, but I'll show you how you would work the elements and principles into something that is not as linear, but still you want the elements and principles. And while you guys are waiting for that answer, I'm going to lift this out so that I can show you the anchor pins. Okay. So here are the anchor pins. Let's see if I can dump the water out so I don't spill it all over. There we go. Here are the anchor pins. Okay. There's three of them secured into the vessel using floral cling or clay, floral clay. So they're secured in with that. Then the foam. Get it all back together here now. Just sets right down into the vessel. and it's secured into place, you don't have to worry about it shifting around so that it won't go anywhere. It just is perfect. Now in this one, doing a horizontal, which you could think of it as a wreath, except I'm only going to do one. And so if you were doing it on a wreath, when you think about the elements of principles, you want to think about guiding the eye across the design in a horizontal format. So I might want to do hydrangea. And with the hydrangea, it's a super heavy water drinker. Think hydra, water. Isn't that a, yeah, I figure that's where they got the name from. And if you use alum, which is the white powder, I give it a cut, 
and then I cut the opposite direction so I get the maximum stem exposed. And oftentimes I'll even put a little slit into it. Then I dip it in the alum and then I place it into the design and I can put it right through the leaf and then down deep so that it's into the water reservoir. That's going to last just as if it was in a vase of water as long as I keep this filled with water. So when I'm done I'll have to go back and replace that water that I dumped out. Then coming in with another. Again, give it a cut. And I have some answers. Okay, what do they have? Okay, so Diane, Kim, Rodney, Serena, Penny, Nako, Lori, and Karen all said form. That is correct. So form is the geometrical shape of an arrangement. So it can be a square, a rectangle, a triangle, a Triangle, let's see, rectangle, square, circle, oval, crescent, but form just refers to the geometrical shape, nothing else. It has nothing to do with the line or the space or anything like that, but form is the geometrical shape of the design. So in this one I was working with a crescent, this one I'm doing more of an oval, Bring it on down. I just pierce through the leaf, making sure it's down deeply into the reservoir. Okay. So now I've created a line going across my design. You can see how it's just kind of going. But there's no focal emphasis at this point. It's just one big line. And the focal emphasis adds interest to the arrangement. I'm going to find a garbage can here. I think I've lost, oh, I found it. I lost my garbage can, but here it is. I put it on the wrong side. I did. I, I was like, did oh that. my Sorry. God. <laughs> like, oh no. Um, and so I could bring in, to create a little bit of emphasis, some carnations. And Leanna, shout out to Amanda, who just started with us last week and is submitting her first design project tomorrow. Oh, yay. I can't wait to see Amanda. You know, it's so fun because um, Carolyn and Marisa and Michelle do most of the grading, but I always have to peek in. I go through and I look to see what it is and what you did because I like to know what you're doing and how it's coming together. So even if they grade it, know that I've peeked because I want to see because it makes me so happy to see students doing well as they study at home. Online education is amazing to me, and we've been doing online education for a long time, even before there was online. We started online education with VHS tapes. Isn't that amazing? I think back, it's like, really? VHS tapes? But that's where we started, online education. And then we went on to DVDs, and now we are into streaming, so you don't have to wait for anything. So notice how that starts filling in the area, drawing your eye inward. And I could enhance it a little more with a garden rose. That beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. And then we also have Serena with us who uh, is inquiring about coming to advanced class in June. Grand. So Serena will be here in June. June is a fun time in Portland. It's when we have our Rose Festival and the whole city celebrates because there's so much going on and it's a great time. And I also see Nikki on here. Who, yes, we just saw that she signed up today. Oh, Nikki, yay. Welcome to Flower School. That's exciting. We haven't even done a shout out to you yet on Facebook. I don't think I have yet. Um, but you will get that in there. So you'll be watching because we'll be shouting about you. I know Carolyn was busy getting people signed up and enrolled into their portfolios today, getting things done, and then we've all just been scurrying to make sure it goes quickly for you. I'm going to stop now and bring it to the other side. One thing I remind people is when you're doing horizontal, you still have a line that goes this direction and also this direction, because you want to pull the eye from one side over to the other. So right now you can see my line stops in the center, but by bringing in a couple more carnations, I can bring you back over to the opposite side so that when you're looking down on it, the line goes front to back. And that's where the wreath 
elements and principles would come in because you would be bringing them from one side of the wreath to the other, kind of zigzagging around so that you can see how I have lines going in there like that. So I have line and emphasis on these two. One done in a pave style, one doing more open. Then I would go back and let's look at this one. Maybe do another one that's a little more in the classic style. Leanne, Stephanie wants to know if you ever reflex your roses. I do. You know, we just did a Tulip Tuesday on reflexing. Um, so if you haven't seen reflexing, you can reflex roses, you can reflex tulips, lilies, um, kale. All of those things um, is basically just taking your petals and then reflexing them so that they fan out, so that they're more dramatic. And if you do it in the roses, just kind of bringing it, just gently forcing the petals back. Laura actually wants to know, the kale in the arrangement is, is stunning, but is, is, it a, is it common to use in arrangements? Kale yes. is getting more and more popular. You know, it goes in phases. Personally, I love kale. I just think it has such a dramatic face to it, and it gives you an instant impact. See how that looks so much fuller now, reflexed out? Very fun. We're getting questions about that, that gold container and all your other containers. Where do you get them from? <laughs> okay, so this one I think came from our local wholesale house. I don't know who the main... It might be a UCI container, but I'm not positive about that. This one came from Flow Supply Syndicate. And again, I don't know the manufacturer, but Flow Supply Syndicate. And then this one is from my personal collection. It was a gift. Um, and it doesn't say where it came from, but um, it's just my personal collection. It's a heavy ceramic. This one is also a ceramic, and then this one is metal. So I'm always on the hunt for containers. And right now it's so important to reuse, recycle, and repurpose. And so it's on trend to look for containers at different used sales. You might find them at Goodwill. And then all of a sudden you're reusing, recycling, all of that, keeping it um, stronger. Carol, I'm instructed. Yeah, Arthur has a great question. He's wondering, do garden roses last as long as regular roses? They certainly can, and in fact, sometimes they last longer. We have a live coming up, um, I can't remember the exact day, but we have a live coming up that's going to focus on garden roses, and we'll be talking about how best to keep them alive for a long time, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, so that'll be coming in the next few weeks, I believe. We'll have garden roses, and we can talk about the longevity and all. It takes... Um, sometimes a whole week for them to open out and look lovely and then you still have quite a bit of time with them even after that week so it's very fascinating to me how well they do last so magnolia cut down with my pruner and then I whittle a little bit because it will hold better it drinks kind of like when you cut a Christmas tree and you get the bark off the side it holds better then I can place this in, determining which way I want it. Let's see, my front is going to be that direction. So I'm going to place it here, coming up in the side. So I'm establishing a line with my branch. And then I might want to establish a focal emphasis down towards the bottom. And maybe I'll do... What do I want to do here? Oh, so many choices. This could be fun. I've got these beautiful miniature simbids. Maybe let it come out and drape. Getting a line coming up through, and then another stem. And how long um, in advance would you suggest to purchase garden roses to use in a bridal bouquet? 
you definitely want to do, look into the different varieties. Um, my favorite resource for figuring how far ahead is GardenRosesDirect.com because when you look on their website and you look by variety, it will tell you purchase five days ahead, purchase seven days ahead, purchase three days ahead, and it actually tells you about how long to plan ahead. And you can also call them and say, can you give me some guidance as to how long these will take to open and be absolutely beautiful? and that way you get exactly what you want when you need it uh, and so that's what I use uh, because every garden rose has a little bit different opening process and so if you plan ahead like that it just works better okay so now I have line focal emphasis covered my mechanics I'm gonna turn around take a look at it and see if I'm sort of correct yeah sort of I think I need another thing get a little more fullness here so that my focal emphasis is stronger. I felt like it was a little bit weak. Now I've got more emphasis in the center here. Line coming up and back, line going up. Now I've got to start thinking about space, texture, color, contrast, harmony, emphasis, rhythm, unity, balance, and scale, all the rest of it. So now when I go to add rhythm to a design, I think about what else have I begun with. When I go to add texture, I think about what else have I started with. Same thing with color. I think, what have I started with and how do I want to continue? So for this one, maybe I want to enhance the whites that are in here. So coming back with a hydrangea. Leanne, any tips on keeping orchids perky? John wants to know. Okay, John, keeping orchids perky. I find um, it helps sometimes to submerge them, to actually put them face into the water for a little bit, let them drink, and then pull them back out, cut their stems, and then they should hold really well for you. Because orchids are actually a long-lasting flower, but if they dry out um, in the air, then they start not lasting quite so well. So I find if you get that water on them, it seems to help a lot. So um, just submerging a little bit. Maybe bring in some roses here. And Debbie, um, actually going back to your reflex roses, she said today at work, one of the girls actually did reflexing and now she's excited to do that in her submission. Aha, I love it. Okay, Debbie, we'll see that. I want to see your reflexing. It is so fun to see the submissions. And you know, we sit in the office as we're doing the grading and we'll go, oh, look at this. Somebody will turn something in and we all come running over to one computer to see who did what. Because it's so much fun to see the creativity that comes in. And then if I don't happen to be here, because I'm not in the office as much, then they'll send it, me a picture in the email. They'll send it to me, Leanne, look at this. You've got to see this. It's so beautiful. And it is beautiful. And it just makes me so happy. And then so many of you are starting to post your designs online as well. And when you tag Floral Design Institute, you know, just go hashtag Floral Design Institute, then I see it online because I always go to see what's on there and what's tagged Floral Design Institute and that way I get to see what you're creating. It's kind of fun. I'll see a student say, oh, I got my first lesson done and there's a beautiful arrangement and I go, oh, I'm so proud of that. So do tag. If you haven't done flower school yet, we are in open enrollment right now for basic floral design both in the classroom and online. The next classroom program starts in April, I believe it is. Um, and then the online, you can start right now. You don't have to wait. And then the next advanced class is in two weeks. And I do have a few spaces left in that. So if you want to come to Portland, Oregon and get your advanced certification, you can do it in person in March. And then um, if you want to do advanced online, again, that's open enrollment right now as well. So you've got choices, lots of choices. So now I've established a stronger line with the white roses filling in. My color, monochromatic, 
My textures are started, but not complete yet. If I wanted to enhance the design, here's another question for you. Let's see who gets the answer. I want to enhance the design with rhythm. How would I do that? How do I create rhythm in an arrangement? So that's the question. How best to create rhythm in an arrangement? I'm gonna set this one aside and grab one of the others and get started on something. So you guys think about it. How do I create rhythm? Leanne, Beverly wanted to know if submerging hydrangeas works like it does for orchids. Submerging hydrangeas can work. You have to be a little careful because if you leave the water um, into the petals, it can cause mold and botrytis, and so then it discolors. It's not attractive. So you've got to be a real careful and cautious about that. Um, if you treat them with boiling water, that's my preference. That's what I use on my hydrangeas. If they start to fade, I um, cut their stems and then put them into a vase that's filled with really hot, you know, coffee pot hot boiling water, and they will revive. If you go onto the YouTube channel and type in hydrangea tulip Tuesday, it'll come up. You can see it there. If you go to our page on the video page and just type in hydrangea care, you'll find it there as well. Um, and so you can see the best ways to keep hydrangeas alive and fresh and fabulous. And my preference is to use quick dip and then boiling water when necessary. But yes, a lot of people do choose to use um, the dipping of the heads. It just hasn't worked quite as well for me. It's not my favorite. So, yeah. Carolyn. This is we're back on the kale arrangement. Um, Arthur would like to know if you think kale is too heavy for a bridal bouquet. Kale is cool in a bridal bouquet, but you may have to use your techniques that we teach on how to make it less weighty because the stem itself can be too bulky and you don't want that thickness into the handle. So you would have to use your mechanics um, and go through that to make sure that it didn't get so heavy that it, it was just too bulky and uncomfortable to hold ungainly. So you gotta do a little bit more careful. So did anybody figure out the rhythm yet? Okay, so I wasn't seeing any answers yet and I was gonna ask if I can try and answer. However, um, let's see here. Lisa just um, chimed in and said, repeat the roses on the bottom right and possibly add another orchid stem to the top left. So kind of got it there because repeat is the right word. Rhythm is created through repetition. So anytime you repeat something, then you help create rhythm. So by bringing three tulips repeated here and then three tulips back this direction. I've started rhythm in there. Now I'm gonna come in and enhance a little more with the deeper red, drawing more attention towards the center. And by doing two of them shadowed, makes it more important, captures your attention. Opening this out. Okay, Leanne. Yeah. So we have Amber who is saying, rhythm is the idea of repeating such as a line or texture. Last week you repeated the physical line with a dynamic line. Correct, yes. So there's so many ways to use the elements and principles, but really understanding them is what makes your designs look fabulous. Knowing how to create all of the concepts correctly is what makes a difference between an arrangement that's just so-so and an arrangement that's fabulous. So bringing another line through here, following through here. So this was repetition coming in, repetition, two lines coming up and around. I can add in some texture. And Leanna, shout out to our viewers from around the world. Um, we have people from Michigan, Alaska, Kentucky, Arkansas, North Carolina, Alabama, Idaho, New York, 
Chile, Newfoundland, the UK, and India. I love it. You know, it, the Tulip Tribe is everywhere. This just makes me so happy. Thanks for putting your tulips in there and your location because that way we all get to know each other and you can say, hmm, I was thinking about going to Newfoundland. I know somebody there. I could find out what is the flower stuff I need to see in Newfoundland. Now, I wasn't going to go to Newfoundland right now, but you know, that's the type of thing whenever I'm going out of town. I go back and look to see who my people in the tribe and where they are so that I can arrange to chat with them, find out a little more about their area, which allows me then to enjoy my visit more because I've got an insider viewpoint, which makes it so grand. Man, Abel says on Facebook, rhythm is being able to dance around with flowers when no one is watching. Abel, that's good. I love it. That's very good. Good for you. Oh my gosh. Abel, I bet you do dance with your flowers too because you've got rhythm. I'm sure about that. So I've started in with some texture now. Still sticking in with um, an analogous color harmony. And you can see how I've got the weight down low in the center and then things coming up and around. I could soften it a little more bringing in some of the Lysianthus. They're so delicate. While I place these, anything else going on out there? We just had um, a new viewer. Her name is Rahima, and she's joining us from Bangladesh. Welcome, Rahima. Is this your first time? Because that's full fun. So everybody say hi to her. Get to know Rahima from Bangladesh. First timers. Let us know you're a first timer and everybody watch for that and greet them. Make them feel really special and welcome. It's kind of scary when everybody knows everybody and you're the new kid on the block and it's like, oh my gosh, is anybody going to like me? And yes, we love you and we want you to be welcome here. So welcome Rahima and Bangladesh. You know, it's, the world is a very small place when it comes to the digital universe. And Leanne, we just have a, a few more viewers that just stated where they're from, Missouri, Virginia, and Croatia. I love it. A um, friend of mine just got back from Croatia. I guess it's been maybe six months ago, something like that. But she was just there visiting family and just got back. So it is a small world, such a small world. Bringing in a little more of the Lysianthus on the opposite side so that I have unity from side to side. Now as we've been working here, the concept is the elements and principles of design. It's the way we teach floral design both in the classroom and online. The reason we teach it that way is that it can then translate into any style. You don't have to be classic, you don't have to be linear, you don't have to be Bespo. It can be whatever style you like and you can still have all the elements and principles and it just works fabulously. And by placing my Lysianthus coming on both sides similar to the Magnolia, I'm doing repetition again. We've got the elements and principles. We start at the very beginning in basic floral design with the five elements, form, space, texture, line, and color. The acronym we use to help you is Flower Shop Tender Loving Care, F-S-T-L-C, form, space, texture, line, color. Then if you're a member of the Flower Lovers Club, you can go into the elements and principles library and you can see examples of the different designs, a design that will show line, static line, dynamic line, all of that. If you are a member of basic floral design, you can go to your lesson that says the elements of design and learn and really study and see examples of form, space, texture, line, and color. If you come to the classroom, we'll be working with you on that. Then once we master the five elements, the form, the space, the texture, the line, the color. Then we move on to the principles. And there are seven principles. And the acronym we use there is CHERUBS. So it's contrast, harmony, emphasis, rhythm, unity, balance, and scale. And when you have all 12 concepts, then the design begins to look quite beautiful. 
So I'm moving this behind me just to get it out of the way for a moment, but you can also see a little bit from there. Then I'm going to set this one aside and come back out with my horizontal and go back to talking about how it works. So whoever had asked about the wreath, we can talk about the fact that it's a flat pave style of design and then creating horizontal lines coming through, adding focal emphasis by having that brightness right here. But I also want to remember that I need to carry your eye all the way across. So I might bring in another rose. We have two more first timers that just chimed in on YouTube. Linda from Kansas and Helene from Hotlanta, Georgia. I love it. Helene and Linda, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Everybody shout out to Helene and Linda. Give them a hello. Give them a little bit of love. Let them know that they are welcome here at the Tulip Tribe Collaboration. Because we love to have everybody. I'm going to have a cup of coffee. My gosh, I've been talking a long time. Oh my gosh. Well, I have a sip of coffee. Anything else going on out there? Yeah, and speaking of first timers, um, Laura, who I've seen on... Um, Facebook Live quite a lot. So who is not a first timer timer on live, but says she will be a first timer soon on the online basic course. That was Laura. Laura Bradshaw. Okay, Laura. I want to be the first one to say welcome to Flower School and invite you to join us. You know, you will love it. Um, if you've enjoyed the lives, it's just sort of a taste of what we do. It really isn't the whole story. Because once you're in the classroom, be it the virtual classroom online or the actual classroom here in Portland, Oregon, then you get that teacher support where you have a question you can ask and somebody's right there to say, you know, why don't you try moving that just a little bit to the right? You may be surprised at how much of a difference that's going to make for you. Or gee, why don't you consider blah, 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 blah. And we have several students who are getting ready to test with the American Institute of Floral Designers in Chicago this year. And when you go to test, what they're going to be evaluating are the same elements and principles that we've been teaching you. So it makes it much more easy. Now, it's still not an easy test. It's a hard test, I won't lie. But by studying your elements and principles, you've got a better chance of doing well with it than you would if you didn't. Because when they're going to be evaluating elements and principles, you're like, oh yeah, been there, done that. I know all about that. And then I know that um, some of the people that are testing this year have already graduated, but they can go back and look at their lessons and review them prior to testing so that they get a reminder and a refresher of all the elements and principles so that they're ready when the testing comes. And speaking of graduating, um, shout out to Nancy Forsyth, who's with us right now. We just sent her her basic certificate, what, yes? Yes. Yesterday. I remember signing it. Yay, Nancy. How exciting. Yeah, when I came in, it always makes me happy. I walk into the Creative Center, and sitting on my desk will be certificates waiting for my signature. And it just makes me so thrilled to be a small part of your floral journey, helping you reach your career goals, helping you go into a career that brings you joy and happiness. And Leanne, listen to what Abel just said to all the first time timers. It says, welcome first time timer, excuse me, welcome first timers. May you bloom where you are planted. Thank you, Abel. You know, we all need that love. And if we just take a moment and give each other a little hug virtually from afar, it can make a difference in your day. You know, sometimes you're you're just feeling overwhelmed and frustrated and and it's 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 just hard. And you're like, oh, I just don't know if I can go on. And then you get that little virtual hug from a flower friend. It's like, okay, I got this. I can do it. I'm okay. It'll be all right. I can do this. And we all need that. I know I do. And I get the little virtual hugs from you all. And it just makes me so happy because you know that flower people are good people. You know how sometimes you think people are not always good, but... Flower people are good people. We are so blessed in our world. It just, I can't imagine doing something where you had to deal with icky people. I don't, I don't want to deal with icky people. 
Okay, Leanne, I have a good question from Harmony Armstrong. Okay, is there a continuing education that the teachers do throughout the year? There is, and um, we do in-house staff training where um, we work on what new concept is going on. We just had a quick um, tutorial last week on some new body flowers that we're introducing into the classes. And so we all get together as a staff. Then this last year we had the creative retreat where that was a combination of staff training. I wanted them to learn from others as well as us sharing it out with our tribe. So yes, we do continuing ed for ourselves constantly. And I know I'm always on the lookout. Um, I'll see graduates do something. I'm like, oh, I have to learn that now. Oh, I have to learn that. Because we learn from each other. Um, it's just been so grand. You know, Vivian, who is one of our graduates in Shanghai, she's been posting right now that she's sketching because she needs to stay home and um, she's been sketching and studying and I've been watching her sketches and going, ooh, I could learn from that too, which makes it so nice. You can see how I've added in some texture now. So two different types of designs, but still with elements and principles. And I'm gonna go back and we had the other one that I was doing in a linear format. So I have a Bespo style, a Pave style, and then I have a linear. And Annalise wants to know if there is a prep class for the EIFD exam. Annalise, there is. It's not available online. It's only in the classroom. It's coming up in May. It's a 3D segment. We have um, several AIFD instructors that work on that and we have found that our students that do take that prep class have a higher success rate than those that do not. So if you can join us, it's all hands-on, we do mock testing, we go through how to prep for it, time management, skills you need, techniques you need, and that's all included in it. So um, it's coming up in May, it's a great three-day segment. Uh, Marisa will be teaching, I'll be teaching, Michelle and Shell, four of us, um, doing AIFD preparation instruction so that you have the best chance of success when you go in to do your final testing in Chicago. Um, I know Vanessa is, Vanessa is coming, Tomasi is coming, uh, a couple other people that I saw have already registered for it. Uh, it's very limited. We just do it once a year. It's very intensive because we want that time with you and all the teachers are AIFD certified so that they have all gone through that same testing. will have exactly the knowledge you need to pull from their brains to allow you to be successful when you do your testing. So yes, that is coming up. So now I'm adding additional lines to create interest, to draw your eye into the focal emphasis area. Also to create contrast so that it's not just white. I needed something to brighten this a little bit so that there was contrast in color. And the eucalyptus just adds a nice ambiance to the design and picks up a little bit of the blue-gray from the catkins of the magnolia. You can see how it comes around and around, filling it in. Then I want to finish covering my mechanics because I'm working just on the one side of the container. So right here, it's just ugly. There's nothing finished over here. Plus, I need a little more substance to add power to support all these different blooms in here. So bringing in the fatsia leaves. So we've got about seven or eight minutes left. So this is my chance to tell you, if you've got a question, get it in there, because once we go, then we'll come back and we'll answer in writing, but I won't be able to answer anything live. So if you get it in there, Marisa and Carolyn and Michelle will be watching so that they can verbalize it to me so that we can get you answered before we go off camera. But if you've got a question about elements and principles or about flower school, ask away. And if you haven't done flower school yet, 
This is the perfect time because flowers are blooming. The employment options are great. The options for opening your own business, beginning wedding design, all of that. This is a perfect time of year because People are ready for flowers. You know, we get so tired of the gray and dark of winter that we just need to have that brightness. And if you come to the classroom, it's bright sunshine and warm in the classroom. If you do it at home, you're bringing flowers into your house and brightening that up, giving spring and summer a jump start. Bring a little bit of the eucalyptus around to the back because I don't want my back to be naked. It is a one-sided arrangement, but you still have to finish. So I have, oh, go ahead. I have a question from Janet um, in Canada. She wants to know if you plan or sketch the arrangements before each live session. No, I don't. Um, a lot of people sketch ahead of time so that they know where they're going. I don't sketch a lot. I don't like the way I sketch. I don't think they turn out very pretty. And today I had some appointments and such, and it was kind of a crazy busy morning for me. So today I just said, guys, get some things ready, set up the studio and give me some vases. And then I just walked in and I knew I was doing elements and principles, but I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew that, well, this is what you got. So this is what you do. Um, and that's kind of the way I like to work because flowers speak to me. They say, oh, this is what you need to do. And I know that I'm going to be doing a triangle. I know I'm doing monochromatic. I know I need a line and emphasis. So then I just create. And that's how I do almost all of my work. Um, there are two types of people, and this is kind of an interesting fact for those of you thinking about flower school. There's two types of people. There are end results, and there are process driven. Process driven, have to see the flowers and touch them before they even know what they're going to do. I'm process driven. So I have to see it, I have to go, okay, yeah, I can do that. And then I can create. End result driven, have to have a sketch and a plan before they can begin. David is end result driven. The way we do our program, when you're online, you can watch the whole video so you know the end result and then go back and do it. If you're process driven, you can watch the video, then go gather your flowers, let them speak to you to know what you want to do. So it really works well, no matter which learning style you have, you can do it within the program and we can adapt to you. One last comment before we close. Um, I wanna thank Laura and Nikki for these beautiful and kind words. Um, both of them said that they chose our school because of the compassion and welcoming approach and that they could feel the love in our school. Oh, that makes me so happy. Yeah. That's important to me because we all need that love. We all need that acceptance and we all need that joy and happiness. So thank you for choosing us. And thank you to the staff for sharing that out with our students because that's one of our guiding principles is to help each and every person find their inner floral joy and beauty. And it's something that we really want to do. We don't care what your style is. We don't care which way you go with the designs. We just want you to help you find your style, your joy, and help you build your business or career Cutting this down so I can get it in here. Getting a little bit of a horizontal movement coming in. Leanne, do you have any um, insight on this question? Um, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm going to try to pronounce uh, Norwegian. Um, they are wanting to know if there is a rule that one does not use white containers. Ah, that's so funny. There are used to be so many rules. Oh my gosh, rules after rules after rules after rules, and you couldn't do this, and you couldn't do that. And so some people still follow that, oh, you shouldn't have a white container. But that rule is not here anymore. It makes no difference. You can have whatever you want. The only problem with white is that it's such a glaring, big, bold statement that you have to be careful and make sure you bring white up. So if you have a white in the dish, 
make sure you have white on in the design so that there's enough that it doesn't just shout at you. I find white is one of the most difficult colors to work with, but as long as you use a lot of it, then it's okay. Where it doesn't work is if you're doing red and white and it's just lots and lots of red and then a couple white and it's just like, oh my gosh, it hurts your eyes. It's like, no. Um, so yes, there are not any real rules that you can't do it, but there are rules that you have to do it correctly. And that's one of the things in the classroom we spend time teaching color because knowing how to use the color wheel, how to work with tints, tones, and shades, knowing the different color harmonies and how they work together will allow you to do a better job. If you want to do a linear design, you can do it in a monochromatic. If you want to do Bespo in an analogous, you can do it. If you want to do a pave so that it's a little bit denser, more compact, you can do it but they all still have the elements and principles of design. They don't look anything alike. They're all totally different, but they all have the 12 concepts. And that's how we teach at Floral Design Institute. And when you join us for your studies, you'll learn those 12 concepts. You'll be able to interpret any design, any style that you like with your flowers using those 12 concepts so that you're not a cookie cutter designer. You are unique, you are you, doing it in your style, but doing it artistically correct. So on that note, I do want to do a shout out again to Susie and Caledonia and David for joining us online. Shout out to Michelle, Carolyn and Marisa for helping me out here in the studio. And a shout out to you for giving up an hour of your day to join the tribe for the weekly collaboration. If you didn't type in there yet, go ahead and do it now. Make sure you got your tulip and where you're from so that everybody can start to get to know you. If you have a friend that should have been here, that should have seen the elements and principles, tag them. Share this video out. I ask you to go ahead and share. Put it out there so that everybody can see it. I'd love to spread it as far as we can so that we have a large crowd that can understand and learn the elements and principles of design. So tag a friend. Share it out, spread the love, and I'll see you all next week for the weekly collaboration as we gather